All right, so today's video is all about time trialing and basically how to make yourself a better time trial as what are my top five favorite sessions to do to increase time trial performance. So last year, a big goal of mine was basically the uni time trial scene. So I started only riding my time trial bike basically end of January and my first race was basically in April. So I had two months to train, which was February and March. So what I did was I managed to increase my threshold from 295 for 20 to 315. And basically managed to do um, like a 53 minute, no 54 minute maybe it was, a 25 mile time trial at about 290 watts. And obviously my first 20 minute power in end of January was 295. So I'd say it was quite successful, um, my training. So I'll go through the favorite one, the favorite efforts to do. Uh, anyway, so first one is tempo spikes. Now, basically what you do is you ride really hard and then really easy. And so on the really hard parts, maybe I like to do a 45 seconds, you can do a minute. Um, at maybe like 120, 130% of threshold, something like that, like really hard. And then you ride in between it, so maybe two, three minutes, something like that, at like 80% of threshold. And you just do that for maybe 15 to half an hour. I normally start about 12 minutes and try and edge it up to like 20, 25 minutes. And I find that's really effective. You can see your heart rate sort of goes up and down, up and down. Um, you'll see all the screenshots on the data uh, on the screen showing exactly what I did. Um, and how my numbers progressed throughout it. Um, the main thing on these is actually not the numbers to go up too much, it's more duration because it's tempo effort. So I feel like the, the increase in intensity isn't too crazy, it's more like how long you can do it for. Uh, rest between them is probably like a third of the interval, so it's 15 minutes, do five minute rest. Next one, which I really like and isn't necessarily just time trial specific, is five by eight minute efforts with a three minute rest in between. So it's sort of like a just above threshold, maybe 105%-ish around that. Um, with um, and it's really good because basically you spend a lot of time above VO2 like 40 minutes of VO2 is hard I'd say you can start these on like four minutes for, sorry four by eight um, And then move them up to five and then when you really hard, you do six um, I generally as long as they stay above threshold then I'll keep doing them basically until six um, But yeah, I find they're really nice. I quite like them They always seem to do quite a good job for me and also they're quite a good measurement of threshold because like if you can keep doing them at higher higher power Then you know your thresholds going up uh, number three, not really an interval session, but just like four hours zone two, three hours zone two, just like standard aerobic rides. I think they're really important for time trialing just to increase your fat oxidation, get better mitochondria. These things aren't a quick fix. You know, it takes months to years for it to really pay like massive dividends doing zone two rides, but definitely something that you need to keep in your training schedule to get better at time trials over a longer period. If you're just cramming maybe two, three months, it's obviously important to have them in there, but they're not gonna see the gains that some of these other sessions will. Um, then my next one is again over-unders. These are slightly different, sort of longer ones. So two minutes at about 110% and one minute at 90%. Do these for 20 minutes, two by 20 if you're odd. Um, I find that really good actually mentally more than anything because I think doing, for me, two by 20 minute intervals is really hard. I find mentally to do that, like be on the limit for 20 minutes, have a little rest and do it again. It's quite tough. Obviously in a race it's different, but I think being able to break it down, it's just two minutes hard and you're like, oh, it's a minute easy, two minutes hard. And obviously a minute easy isn't that easy, but it's easy enough to bring your heart rate down. Um, and I really enjoy them. Um, they definitely have helped me quite a lot. And it was actually quite a big breakthrough session being able to do two times 20 at like 300 for that. Um, I was really happy and I was like, I'm definitely going well. Um, and then my, my last one is, um, based off Chris Froome actually, um, and he does do tempo spikes as well, but this one was go really hard for two minutes. So I'd say, again, maybe 110, 120% threshold, like super hard for two minutes to get a massive amount of lactate and then ride like 18 minutes steady, um, like maybe sweet spot-ish intensity. And I found that was really good as well, very effective. Um, and I think that's something that can be really uh, good for the time trial, uh, just because it sort of simulates, I guess, it's just better than doing a standard 20 minute block. And I think that's the thing I've learned is that doing a standard like two by 20 is fine, but I think going over under, you get more gains. Um, then finally, those all I recommend to do on the time trial bike. Okay, maybe not those four hour zone two, that can be done on the road bike. I recommend every other one, do it on the time trial bike, on the flat, um, and focus on your position. Because realistically, a lot of time trial training is not physiological, it's more like position wise. It's more like, you know, can you put the power out in, the, in that position? Because let's be honest, like when I started and did 295 watts for 20, like my threshold on a climb was 320. So you can see the massive difference. By the end, obviously I got it close, um, like closer together, like my threshold was about 300, 305 maybe, um, at like on the time trial bike and 320, 330 maybe uh, on, the t on the climbing. So obviously it's not exactly the same, but it, it's not too far off. So I think that's something to do. Um, I've got two bonus sort of sessions, which I think are more 
just before you do it. And I think 30, 15 is really useful just to prime yourself. I find like if you do two, three sessions of 30, 15, so let's say your, your target um, is, you know, on this date, 30, 15 is in the taper week. And then two weeks before that, I find that those are really effective just to give that last little push. Um, and I feel like they work on a short time scale. Some of them take long time, like physiological adaptations, but 30, 15 is work really quickly. Um, and I'd say also the same with um, maybe some 40, 20s as well. Um, again, sort of short intervals um, on and off. And I think those really help as well. I wouldn't do those on the time trial bike because I don't think there's much point. Like you're not gonna do them in position. Um, instead, I did them on a climb on my road bike and did some of my best ever numbers on them. Um, and I think that's more like sort of physiological, just like priming your muscles to get ready. I don't think it's important to do them on the time trial bike because they're not representative of time trialing. You're not going to be doing 30 seconds at 440 watts, let's say, or whatever, and then 15 seconds noodling, like you're just gonna ride steady 330, plus or minus a little bit. So anyway, that's what I think are really, some really effective time trial training um, for me. Uh, in terms of structuring them, I'd say to do two sessions a week um, for most of the time, and then if you think on the last week, um, just before rest week, maybe do three, but I generally think there's no point doing more than two. Just make sure they're really high quality, uh, and that's the key thing to focus, and generally I like to do three to four weeks on, normally three weeks, one week off, maybe test if you think you've gone up a lot, but if not, I think often you can just use the workouts to know what your threshold is. Um, and then, yeah, I think, you know, do these probably like, again, two two to four months out from your your effort um, and start with the sort of lower lower intensity tempo spikes and then move up to the five by eights and the 30 15s closer to your event. And obviously, I think if it was um, a shorter event, I'd do more VO2 max and if it's a longer event, uh, probably a little bit more threshold, but you know, that's sort of, up to you. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video um, and I'll see you in the next one.